much. Let's get into this debate now. We're joined from St. Louis, Missouri, by radio talk show host and Tea Party activist Dana Lash, and from Washington Democratic strategist James Carville. And, and, and Dana, let me begin with you. You saw Joe Biden out there last night. There's the White House message. Moderates need not apply to the Republican Party. Well, I've seen several elections where moderates in the Democrat Party have been run out on a rail like Elijah Lovejoy. What we're seeing with the Republican Party, in the, in the particular case of Mike Castle, I think calling him a moderate is especially generous. This guy's record was indistinguishable from the Democrat to which he, was, he wanted to run against in the general election. And what we saw was the people, this was the people of Delaware that spoke. This wasn't a, a group of Republicans. They tried to nominate Mike Castle, but the primaries are all about getting the people's voice out there. That's what we saw in this primary with Christine O'Donnell and the people made their voices heard that they were unhappy and, with Mike Castle's record. And, and James, there is some evidence out there that the Tea Party is not just on the fringes right now. I want to show you some numbers from our latest Washington Post ABC News poll. It shows that Tea Party supporters now make up 44% of the, uh, of the primary electorate, those who really strongly support the Tea Party, almost a quarter of the electorate. And these guys overwhelmingly are focused on Democrats. 92% of them believe that Democrats don't deserve re-election. That is a warning sign for the Democrats in November. Well, certainly, and, and, and congratulations. The, the Tea Party, it, this comports with the, the research we did at Democracy Court. The Tea Party is more powerful than the Republican Party than African Americans and organized labor combined are in the Democratic Party. And you're exactly right, George. And people like Christine O'Donnell are, are part of the mainstream of the Republican Party right now. And, and, and if you look at what happened in New York State, if you out, Eliza Lovejoy, what about Robert Bennett? What about Murkowski in Alaska? What, what about Mike Castle? I mean, these people have been around. I don't know about Eliza Lovejoy, but I know what's happening over there. And the Tea Party <laughs> is the Republican Party now. This is not a fringe element of the Republican Party. This woman O'Donnell is, is right in the middle of it. And, and, and it's exactly right. And, and they're a very, very powerful force. They're running that party right now. And Dana, the, the Democrats are hoping that uh, candidates supported by the Tea Party, like Sharon Engel in Nevada, uh, like Rand Paul, like Christine O'Donnell, because they either lack experience or have what some would consider extreme views, will cost Republican seats that they otherwise would have won. I don't know if they would have extreme views. One, and I don't think that the, the Tea Party movement is, is, is mainstream. I think it's mainstream America, period. We've seen so much data coming up from the, the past year that the majority of Americans, they, they believe that the Democrat congressional agenda is too extreme. They identify with the individual liberty and smaller government that the grassroots movement espouses. And candidates like Sharon Engel and Rand Paul, these are people, it's not, it's not a, a lack of beltway establishment experience or stain that they, that they, that they don't have. It's the fact that they're standing up for principles that the majority of Americans want. I, I want the government out of my pocketbook and my bedroom and everything else, and that's what the majority of Americans want. That's the platform that these candidates stand upon. As one, someone wrote in the Wall Street Journal this morning, James, it's the spending, stupid. Well, I, and clearly, Christine O'Donnell doesn't believe in spending, particularly her own money, because she's a deadbeat. She doesn't pay her loans back <laughs> and a oh. lead on the house. So we, we, can, we can really classify her as anti spending. In terms of getting in the bedroom, this woman has run against masturbation. I, I, I don't, that seems to me to be a lot of government intrusion. I'd be, be honest with you. It's right there in the New York Times this morning. I'm sorry, but she's, she's really against spending. She ain't not going to spend any of her money. I mean, but, but again, this is the Republican Party. It's very anti-spending. It's, it's, it, it, it's promoting a bunch of deadbeats. Dan, I think we have the, the clip oh, that James may be referring to. So why don't I show that and then get you to respond. Here it was, I think it was in 1996 on MTV. The reason that you don't tell them that masturbation is the answer to AIDS and all these other problems that come with sex outside of marriage is because, again, it is not dressing the issue. You're going to be pleasing each other. And if he already knows what pleases him and he can please himself, then why am I in the picture? James brought it up, but I think a lot of people might watch it and say, well, what's wrong with yeah. what she said? She's talking about masturbation. It's not like she's uh, wearing black socks and getting caught in, uh, in, in hotel rooms with uh, call girls and stuff. I mean, if we want to point fingers on, on bedroom antics, we can do that. But this is, I mean, uh, this is, it, what, she didn't say anything that's, it, some of the stuff that she said in her past, I don't think anybody, if you look back at the history of everything that Mr. Carville has said, and George, you, and myself, not everyone is going to be perfect. Perfection, if it were required for public office, nobody would be fit to run.
But I don't like the class warfare sort of angle that, that Karl Rove seemed to have taken when he was speaking about her. That's something that, that, that bugged me a little bit. James, you get 10 seconds to end this. Well, I, I, I look again, like I say, she, she's a very fiscal conservative. She doesn't believe in paying the bills, and she equated masturbation to adultery. And boy, if that's the case, the Iranians would be stoning a lot of people in this country. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay, James Carville, Dana Lash, thanks very much.